The Eve Brown is a certified hot mess. Oh, relatable. Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Anastasia the Black Bookworm. Um, thank you so much for being here. Today's video is, tell me if you like it, this is something new for me. I might do it again. I probably will do it again. Yeah, just tell me if you like it. If you don't like it, don't say nothing because I'm probably going to do it again. Today's video is, um, I just wanted to discuss the Brown Sisters trilogy, which I read last week. Um, so y'all already know, I have notes because I can't remember anything. Um, thank you so much for being here. I know I said that, but I just want to take the time to say it again. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I sincerely appreciate it because you do not have to be here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I don't know how long this is going to take. So let's just get into it. I, I wrote down a bunch of notes because I read this last week and I've already read like, I don't know how many other books since I've read those. So I just needed to write down my notes. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the series down book by book. It's three books. Um, they are interconnected standalones. The first one is Get a Life, Chloe Brown. The second is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. And the third is Actor Age, Eve Brown. And so if you've been wondering whether or not you should read this series, then um, maybe this video will let you know whether or not you should. So let's go ahead and get into it. If you have not heard of it, this series was written by Talia Hibbert. Um, she is a Black British author who lives in a bedroom full of books that is on the back of her books. <laughs> um, this is the first one. Get a Life, Chloe Brown. And I'll read the back because I think that would do the best of like summarizing what this book is about way better than I could. Okay. Chloe Brown is chronically ill. Ooh, hoo, hoo. let's try this again. Chloe Brown is a chronically ill computer geek with a goal, a plan, and a list. After almost but not quite dying, she comes up with seven directives to help her get a life. And she's already completed the first, finally moving out of her glamorous glamorous family's mansion the next items enjoy a drunken night out ride a motorcycle go camping have meaningless but thoroughly enjoyable sex travel the world with nothing but hand luggage and do something bad but it's not easy being bad when you've oops even when you've written step-by-step -step guidelines on how to do it correctly what chloe needs is a teacher and she knows just the man for the job Redford Red Morgan is a handyman with tattoos, a motorcycle, and more sex appeal than 10,000 Hollywood heartthrobs. He's also an artist who paints at night and hides his work in the light of day, which Chloe knows because she spies on him occasionally. Just the teeniest, tiniest bit. But when she enlists Red in her mission to rebel, she learns things about him that no spy session could teach her, like why he clearly resents Chloe's wealthy background and why he never shows his art to anyone and what really lies beneath his rough exterior. So that's a, that's a really good summary of what the book is about, actually. Pretty much, Chloe almost gets run down by this um, drunken housewife, um, like in the middle of the day while she's on one of her walks to just get her body going. And um, she, thinks about in that moment of time, like, what would my obituary say? And she's like, oh my God, I wouldn't say nothing. <laughs> so she makes this list and sets off to get a life so that if for some reason, if and when she passes, her obituary will be full of things that she did um, and not just like nothing. Now, the reasons why I like this book, first of all, I gave this book four and a half stars out of five stars. Um, and it's kind of like enemies to lovers and close proximity. Um, because they live in the same apartment complex. Red is the tenant manager. Um, and so you have that trope of like, they're always gonna see each other, always gonna be near each other. Um, but their apartment complexes are like across the way. So she can look out her window and see inside his. And the chronic pain that she lives with is fibromyalgia. Now something that I think Talia does a really good job with 
is representation of just I don't know if it's like fully dis disability representation, but it's just differently abled people. And I think she does a really good job with representing that. I love that her um, main characters are black women that are thicker and fuller and it's not like a driving point of the story. You know, it's just um, bigger women living their lives. It is what it is. And it's not made into something that's this big of a deal. In fact, they're shown and described for their sexuality and how beautiful they are and how um, much confidence they have in themselves. And I thought that that was such a brilliant thing to do because I know as a black woman, I know how I feel like looking at my body in the mirror and like looking at myself. And I know what other forms of media want me to think about my body and myself and my hair and all this other kind of stuff. And so seeing someone just write unapologetically black women being black women and it not being like made into this big thing, but it's just, this is their existence. Oh my gosh, loved it. I loved every second of it. I also think that she did a really good job within this book specifically um, with showing what it's like to live with an invisible disability because on the outside looking in, you don't know that Chloe is dealing with something that is so traumatic to her and her body and like the ailments that she goes through and the fact that she has to like have days where she's just in bed and she's just on all these medications, but you just would not know that on the outside looking in. And I think what she did with Red as a character who's able to sympathize with that and not in a way that's like preachy and that he has to learn, but it's like, no, it's just innate. He just treats her like a person and he gives her that personhood of like, I mean, if you're in pain, then let's be smart about what we're going to do. If you want to go camping, then we can go camping. We just won't go camping out far deep into the woods because you don't need to walk that far. It is what it is. But he's not taking away any agency of hers. If anything, he's like helping her to create, not to create, helping her to own even more of her, um, of herself and of her body. And I loved it. Um... Let's see. Y'all had to write some notes because I'd be forgetting. Um, oh, I like the fact that Chloe is the oldest. But you get all three of the sisters in each of the books. And you see how much her sisters take care of her. And it's really, I don't know how often I've seen the oldest sibling being taken care of so much. Um, just like physically being taken care of. Because usually it's the other way around. Usually it's the youngest one that has the most like... I don't want to say the most support because they support each other throughout the whole entire series, but just the most, I guess caretaking would be the right word. So I just, I loved that aspect of this book. You also get, um, oh, lastly, lastly, the small little bit of tidbit that we get that Chloe's hair is like always in a bun and her hair is relaxed and like, she has, I don't know if it's just like a Southern thing, but we call it new growth. Like if you have a relaxer in your hair and you're black people, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, if you have a relaxer in your hair and then your hair starts to grow back, the way that your hair grows naturally is a completely different texture than the relaxed state. And Chloe relaxes her hair because the amount of work that natural hair takes is so much that she's just like, no, I, it's just easier for me and for my like joints if I just relax it. But she like appreciates her new growth when it comes in. That little tidbit was so, that's just why it's important to have like black people writing black people because other people can't relate to that. They don't know what that's like. And so for her to, just to add that in there, I was like, I don't know if this was supposed to be like such a big deal, but for me, it was so huge to see and like to read that. Oh my gosh, I loved it. Oh, I loved it. Um, with our love interest, Red, he, I don't know if I've ever seen a character that's like a male character that acknowledges the fact that he's been abused by a woman. Sorry, y'all, I just pulled out that hair because it was just needing to come out. Um, but yeah, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen that. And he just, 
you learn how his ex did him wrong and like why he is the way that he is with his art and all this other kind of stuff. But so check trigger warnings. But I just I've never seen that. I've never seen a male character. And I'm sure there are other books out there so i'm not saying that it's not been done before i'm just saying for me this was my first interaction with a male character that was um able to talk about the abuse that he had gone through from a woman in a previous relationship so i just it was very impactful to me um the third act conflict that they have yeah, with reading romance, those third act conflicts can either be like hit or miss, mainly miss. And so for this one, I was just happy that it was like something that made sense. It was very believable um, just because of who they are. Like if you're going to throw in miscommunication or lack of communication and it just doesn't make any sense because these characters have been very open and honest with each other the entire time. It's like, well, that don't make no sense. Where's this coming from? But this was something that when it happened, I was like, oh, no, I get it. I completely understand why they would react the way that they do in this situation. And mm. and then lastly, button. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. Moving on to the next book, which was Take a Hint, Danny Brown. Now, y'all, I read these books out of order. I read this one first and Chloe second. It is what it is. I realized when they mentioned Redford in this book, I was like, oh, hold up. I think I'm reading this out of order, <laughs> but it's all good. Um, all right, let's read what this one is about. Y'all, I'm reading these summaries because they summarize it better than I ever could. <clears throat> Danica Brown knows what she wants, professional success, academic renown, and an occasional role in the hay to relieve all that career-driven tension. But romance, been there, done that, burn that t-shirt. Romantic partners, whatever their gender, are a distraction at best and a drain at worst. So Danny asks the universe for the perfect friend with benefits, someone who knows the score and knows their way around the bedroom. When big brooding security guards of Beer and Sari rescues Danny from a workplace fire drill gone wrong, it's an obvious sign. PhD student Danny and her former rugby player Zap are destined to sleep together. But before she can explain that fact to him, a video of the heroic rescue goes viral. Suddenly half the internet is shipping Dr. Rugby and Zap is begging Danny to play along. Turns out his sports charity for kids could really use the publicity. Lying to help children? Who on earth would refuse? Danny's plan is simple. Fake a relationship in public, seduce Zap behind the scenes, the trouble is Grumpy Zap is secretly a romantic and he's determined to corrupt Danny's stone cold realism. Before long, he tackles her fears into the dirt, but the former sports star has issues of his own and the walls around his heart are as thick as his um, thighs. Suddenly the easy way Danny dreamed of is more complex than her thesis. Has her wish backfired? Is her focus being tested or is the universe waiting for her to take a hint? I loved this book. I love them all, obviously. I gave this four and a half stars. It's got fake dating, as you saw, and friends with benefits. Um, <laughs> the first thing that I wrote down was, Danica is a whole witch. <laughs> I just wasn't expecting it, but yeah, she's a witch. Um, and you learn like how her family influenced her to be a witch. And it's not anything that's like crazy, but I was just like, er? no one said that about this book. <laughs> um, but you see someone who was not loved properly in past relationships because of her lack of time to give to partners because she's so focused on her goals. And that's something that a lot of women have to deal with, um, chasing your dreams or having a relationship. Um, I don't want to necessarily say a man because Danny was dating men and women. Um, but she's scarred by that. And she's, it, it's, oh, it was just sad to see a woman that's so strong and just so driven and focused and is doing well in so many other aspects of her life is just suffering because someone worthless didn't appreciate who she was, how driven she was. And uh, I just felt bad. I just felt so bad. Um, I love that she had short hair and I love that she changed the color of it whenever she pleased. And yet again, you have another woman that is just seen and revered as this 
or just black, thick woman just living and just voluptuous curves, just the epitome of womanhood. And seeing her just admired out loud, all of them just being admired out loud. And not like in a way that was fetishizing or anything like that, but just genuinely admired, genuinely adored is, it was just very, it was very beautiful to see that written down. Um, Zaf does not want to be defined by his past. He went through something very tragic and it's us, and that is why, excuse me, he does not play professional rugby anymore. And I understood that. I liked seeing a character that was very, another, again, another male character, very vulnerable. Talia does an excellent job at writing that. Um, and he talks about like his experience of how he's gone to therapy and it begs the question of like, can a person be too healed from their issues? Which I never, I never even thought about. Cause you know, I think we all like work towards healing in some way, shape or form. If you want, if you want to heal yourself, if you're like in that mind state, you work towards that. But I don't think I've ever pondered whether or not we can like overheal too much to the point of where now we're damaging ourselves in another way. So that was a fascinating thought process that this book brought up for me. Uh, <laughs> and I liked the aspect that, mm, I don't know, I feel like that'll be a spoiler, so I won't say that. We're just gonna move on. Um, I like men that are romantic in books. I do, I really do. I like the idea of him reading romance novels like a lot like as much as me just reading romance novels and I related to Zap in a way that oh my god I related to Zap so much I, my heart hurt for him in so many ways because I was like man I know what it's like when you out here trying to be a romantic and folks don't want romance <laughs> and you're just like maybe one day <laughs> And these folks are like, not today. <laughs> oh, man, I, I, I just felt for him in that way. And I just wanted to reach through these pages and hug him and hold him and just give him my support because I just felt I just felt for him. I felt so bad. <laughs> um, ooh. But I think all around an important lesson that readers can get from this book is finding someone that is truly compatible with you and your lifestyle um and what that really genuinely looks like and not having to compromise the important parts of yourself to get that i'm not saying that relationships don't take compromise obviously they do but there are some areas that might be non-negotiables and finding someone that will accept those non-negotiables without problem and so I just think that was a beautiful lesson that you can get from this book, that readers can get from this book. I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Last, but certainly not least, we have actor age Eve Brown. I give this book five stars because it was worth it. Um, I loved this book. I loved everything about this book. Oh my gosh, okay. Eve Brown is a certified hot mess. Oh, relatable. No matter how hard she strives to do right, her life always goes horribly wrong. So she's given up trying. But when her personal brand of chaos ruins an expensive wedding, someone had to deliberate, oops, someone had to liberate those poor doves. Her parents draw the line. It's time for Eve to grow up and prove herself, even though she's not entirely sure how. Jacob Wayne is in control, always. The bed and breakfast owner, y'all, I saw bed and was like, mm. the bed and breakfast owner is on a mission to dominate the hospitality industry and he expects nothing less than perfection. So when a purple haired tornado of a woman turns up out of the blue to interview for his open chef position, he tells her the brutal truth. Not a chance in hell. Then she hits him with her car, supposedly by accident. Yeah, right. Now his arm is broken, his BMB is understaffed, and the dangerously unpredictable Eve is fluttering around trying to help. Before long, she's 
infiltrated his work, his kitchen, and his spare bedroom. Jacob hates everything about it, or rather he should. Sunny Chaotic Eve is his natural born nemesis, but the longer these two enemies spend in close quarters, the more their animosity turns into something else. Like Eve, the heat between them is impossible to ignore, and it's melting Jacob's frosty exterior. Five stars, y'all. Five stars. I loved it so much. I relate to Eve because I'm the youngest. Granted, there's only two of us, but still, I'm the youngest. And just seeing just seeing the youngest one that has like, I don't want to say no direction, but it's trying to figure out their direction and like is scared to fail and all this stuff. Oh God, I loved it. I loved it. Um, again, you get representation of differently abled people navigating life. Um, I'm gonna say it again because it's so important. This book, you get the adoration for just a black woman being beautiful and black and a little thick. And I just love it so, so much. Um, seeing her, like seeing them be described as like sex symbols Oh my gosh, I, just, I loved it. Um, Jacob is, was it a little bit of an age gap? Because he was 30 and she was like, I don't know, it's not that much. It's like five, six years. Um, <laughs> sorry, y'all, I'm laughing at my notes. Uh, Jacob is definitely on the autism spectrum. He's He found this out when he was younger. Um, but you get to see, yet again, a man who has gone through just familial trauma, um, doesn't really trust that many people, is not social with that many people, which is ironic because he owns a BNB. and b um, And you have his complete opposite, like just the juxtaposition between the two of them. Eve is just this loud, boisterous, in your face, friendly person. And I just, I love a grumpy sunshine. I do. I didn't know I did, but I do. I also love an enemy to lovers. I also love a workplace romance. And this is just what that was. Um, okay, so these, I don't know who told me these books were smutty. They're not. There's like two scenes per book. Um, however, the way they are written is nice. The way they're written is very good. Jacob is a freak and I'm here for it. And I wish we would have gotten more. I wish we would have gotten more because baby, yes. It was so, it was so, it was so good. It was so good. I was like, Jacob, you just, I would not expect this from you, but I'm not mad at it. I'm gonna say that much. Um. It's a little bit insta lovey, but which I'm not normally a fan of, but like I said, I get this book five stars. So I will say that Talia did a really good job writing that and having it make sense where it's like, oh, okay, these characters are insta lovey and it's for a reason. That might not be like my steez, but I understand completely why that happened with these characters. It wasn't anything that I would question because I was like, okay, no you see how their personality is you see um you see who they are you see these people that are like <sighs> determined in ways and lost in others but their connection being almost instant made perfect sense to me um and their third act conflict yet again made sense all of the third act conflicts made sense in this series um which for me that's like almost an automatic four stars it's like oh what you wrote a book and the characters the external conflict that arises is not just random just to like break them up or keep them apart or something like that but it actually makes sense i love it loved it <laughs> yeah i'm trying to see if i left anything out because i had to write a lot of stuff down uh <laughs> Oh gosh, yes. Learning 
one, finding your purpose, what that looks like, what you think it might be, and being able to shift to what it actually is. Beautiful, beautiful lesson that you get from this book. Um, but also in the midst of finding yourself, standing up for who that person is that you realize that you are, or not even if you're them yet, but like giving yourself the space and the chance to find out who you are and setting healthy boundaries. And, oh, I just, kudos, kudos to these sisters, kudos to this series, kudos to Talia for writing it. Um, I just wanted to share that because one, that was part of my summer TBR and we're knocking that bad boy out and I'm a mood reader so the fact that like I'm going through and like getting some of those books read I'm very proud but yes that was that was my experience reading uh the brown sisters trilogy could this be I don't know what that smile looks like but that might have been a that might have been a thumbnail I love this book y'all. I love these books. They were so good. Um, definitely if you're on the fence about reading them I would recommend that you do. If you like super smutty romances that's not what this is. Um, like I said you get a few scenes but it's just it's very sweet and tender in the best way. But yes thank you so much for watching. Ah, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn on those post notifications and um, new videos come out weekly. I'm working. I'm working my hardest for y'all. So just thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I, like I said before, I'll say it again. I sincerely appreciate it. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing day. Go read some smut or not. And I'll see you next time. Bye.